lovely people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. I tell you, it's been four seasons in one day today. It was glorious sunshine this morning and, uh, and then torrential rain and thunder and lightning and now we're back to sort of a nothingness. So, oh, just crazy. Uh, makes you wonder what on earth you can make in your wardrobe that is going to be seasonally appropriate because like literally three weeks ago here in um, South East it was something like 32 degrees like mega hot um, uh, so we're all like making like really you know summery things and here we are just three weeks later and I don't know about you but I'm already thinking about um, I'm already thinking about transitional wardrobes so yeah just crazy crazy times so today i wanted to share with you um what i've been uh, up to so far this month now i use the expression month uh, with a little bit of artistic license um i made this dress for example some time ago um I want to say probably two months ago I think and for some reason I never included it in any of my footage so but I did want to share with you uh, this with you so um, and I've got another two three maybe four items to share with you today so um, let's get started so yeah the dress I'm making uh, making wearing uh, this is the uh, Tabitha t-shirt dress um, by Tilly and the Buttons um, and it's another uh, another make out of her Make It Simple um, book, which I absolutely love. Uh, genuinely, um, I think that book has been the best sewing book I ever bought. I genuinely have got brilliant value for money out of that. Um, yeah, the Sapphire trousers I've made loads. I've made the dungarees. Um, obviously, I made the Tabitha t-shirt. I had a go at the Bertha cardigan, although I got the um, the fabric quite um, my choice of fabric for that was not right. Um, I forget what else is in it, but it has been oh the uh, the the wrap the wrap play suit. Um, yeah, just brilliant. So this dress, and I will put some footage in here. Um, I I haven't got a lightweight t-shirt dress. Um, and it's so easy to wear um, and I think probably the closest I've ever come to this is the Molly dress um, from the Sew Over It book um, but I wanted something a bit more lightweight and when I saw this fabric um, it, which is from the Textile Centre um, if they've still got it in stock I'll link it below um, it was a funny old thing actually because the Textile Centre have um, redone some of their photographs and you don't actually see the fabric. You sort of see the top half of a mannequin and then the description below tells you what it is. It's not the case for all of their fabrics, but just for some of them. And this one was point in case in that it said um, rainbow striped jersey and you couldn't actually see it. So um, I wonder if they've done themselves out of some sales there, but it's such a soft cotton, uh, like cotton jersey. Um, if I stand up, although I will put some footage in, um, it's so the tub of the t-shirt is a very simple concept it's the the t-shirt on the top and then you self draft a skirt and um, you won't see it here but I'll put it in the footage um, it's a full length um, sort of maxi and then you just have a simple drawstring here um, and I actually made I actually made the, the drawstring slightly differently to what is in the instructions because um, I think it's a slightly more lightweight belt that um, she is drafted there, but I just I just made my own. Um, but yeah, a full length maxi t-shirt dress, um, definitely secret pajamas, super comfortable to wear. I didn't add pockets in this um, because it's cream. I didn't want there to be. Uh, it's not. It's it's opaque, so you can't see through it or anything. But I wasn't sure whether the pockets would sort of you'd be able to see the pockets themselves if they were in on themselves. If that makes sense. Um, and actually, um, it's quite, it's not tight fitting, but it's quite close fitting. And I didn't want the additional bulk either, um, but I just love it. I love the colours in this. Um, this has popped up on my Instagram feed uh, uh, pretty much around the time I made it because I was wearing, I think it was wearing a denim jacket with it, but it wasn't the, oh, maybe it was when I made the Sorrento denim jacket. 
Well, in which case, as you know, that's not that long ago, so I shouldn't beat myself up too much. Um, yes, so a really lovely make, and um, totally recommend this. And I'm actually looking forward to making this in um, sort of a ponty weight fabric as well, I think, um, for the winter. Um, although the molly dress is just as good um it's a, yes really simple um i'm just looking at it now to remind myself the construction uh you do put the sleeves in on the flat um and it's a sim nice simple neck band um so all in all very happy with this one um yeah i don't I don't know if i did very much no i didn't do any pattern much um can't think can't see um i think i've the sleeves themselves match, but the stripes maybe not necessarily. Um, but I'm not too, I'm not too concerned by that. Um, so I'm quite happy with it, uh, and it's me that's got to wear it. So if I'm happy, that's okay with me. So let me get changed now, um, and I will show you my next make. Okay, so here I am in the second make of the things I've been making so far this month. And you know, um, every now and again I'm very influenced, or actually I'm influenced all the time by um, the fellow sewists I watch on YouTube. I find it really relaxing watching other people and the makes they get up to and things. And so this top is um, totally influenced by Alex Judge Sews. Um, so Alex made this just a few weeks ago. Um, I've written it down because I don't want to get it wrong. It's the Staley top um, by LB Textiles. Now I believe they're an Australian company. Um, looking on the website, um, actually I don't know too many details. I don't think there's a huge amount of patterns that they've released, but they've got a beautiful aesthetic. I, th I think all of them are quite sort of mint velvet-esque, um, very classic lines. Um, I should say, by the way, if you hear some giggling in the background, my daughter is upstairs. It's obviously summer holidays here and she's got a friend around and they're um, just giggling and laughing and just being teenagers. So I don't want to stop that at all. But if that's what you can hear, um, that's just what it is. Um, but yeah, so this top, um, I, I saw this a few weeks ago. Um, I haven't been buying patterns and things, but it's just niggled, niggled in there in my brain, especially with the weather we've been having recently. Um, and I just think it's such a transitional piece. Absolutely love the neckline of this. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in, in a second. I will put some footage in, but um, I really love. Um, so the, the pattern itself um, comes with the t-shirt um, and the top. Um, I will put a stock photo in uh, of the line drawing maybe or something like that. Um, but it's got a lovely, um, a lovely uh, sort of split in the side here and then that's the back um, I'll turn around again so that I haven't got my back to you whilst talking so Alex did a full review of this and I'm absolutely certain all of you um, know of Alex um, Judge Sews but if you don't please do go check out her channel and I'll pop all the details of hers her, her channel down below but I just love the aesthetic of this um, as Alex described, it's a sweet spot of a neckline, and I I totally agree. Uh, I love it. It's not too high, it's not too low, and I really love how the necklines um, work together. Um, now I'm certain uh, I've I've made two of these, and I'll show you both. Just I've made one T-shirt and two tops. I thought, well. Whilst I'm cutting out one one top, why not cut out two? So I did a bit of batch sewing on both of them together. And it was really interesting how differently both tops turned out. Um, based on based on uh, the, the different fabric choices. So this is a really lightweight, um, sort of lightweight jersey. Um, it's actually a little bit sheer. Um, not that it you know don't doesn't bother me at all. It is quite sheer, um, and it's quite drapey. Um, and so the neckline on it is quite wide. The cotton um, that I used for the white t-shirt is a really nice, nice weight cotton. It's quite thick. And so actually the necklines themselves, I think are identical, but you can see already the difference um, uh, that this is made in that this is much more structured and therefore closer fit. And this one's looser weave and therefore um, sits wider. But I really like how they complement each other. And I really love the um, the, the um, crop ten line of the t over the, sh of the over shirt and the longer line of the um, the t-shirt. Um, I it's quite funny really because the 
this fabric is very different to the other fabric I used and on the other fabric the arms came out um, quite long and then you add a cuff um, and on this one they came out perfectly and then you add a cuff and I completely forgot that so I cut the arms too short um, because I ended up taking um, the same amount of uh, basically the same amount for the cuff off the sleeve and making them the same as they were with the sleeve I hope that makes sense um, but I forgot that the two had come out so differently so that's why this one has come out a bit short but I'm the sort of person that wears their wears their sleeves slightly rolled up anyway so it doesn't matter um, these aren't my uh, I really like the t-shirt the t-shirt has come out really well and you'll see it in a little bit more detail with one of the other makes I've got to show you because I just wear it with the plain t-shirt um, this is not the finest sewing I've ever done um, there's uh, I probably rushed these a little bit um, I was just so enthusiastic to make them but I really love this um, this dip hem here um, it's, it is concave and obviously then this is um, the other way around and it's really clever how they finish the hem on here um, you there is actually um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think to myself now there's a yes there's a hem binding so you actually finish the hem by actually um, putting an additional piece on, folding it under, and then sewing it on. Um, and that creates this really lovely, um, completely enclosed side split here as well. I would really encourage you to, to, um, to check it out. Um, I've already got um, another fabric in mind. Um, I've got, uh, I really want to buy this light mint, um, I think it's called Faux Angora um and then a gray t-shirt light gray i'm really into that color scheme at the moment and i think that's just going to look really cool um but yeah i i love it i think it's just a really nice and i've worn it loads um yeah as i say it's not my finest work in terms of the finish um and the overlocking on the inside looks terrible but you don't need to see that bit, didn't even need to tell you about that. Um, so let me pop the other one on and you'll see what I mean in terms of the variation you could get um, just by changing the fabric type. Hang on a sec. Yeah, so this is the other version and I've actually put it on using the screen, so I hope I put it on right. Um, but you'll see immediately how different it looks in a different type of fabric. Um, and see the, the sleeves there are longer. Uh, this is a very, very loose weave. It's um, an unusual fabric, this one. Um, I got this, I think I got this in a scrap bag from Colville Fabrics years ago. Um, and it's sort of a cotton knit. Um, <laughs> and for those of you who watched my last video, you'll you'll know I talked about um, things that crease. Well, my nightmare continues because this creases. Um, I don't understand it, but it creases like mad. Um, so I end up having to iron this as well. Um, I will overcome my my um, my fear of um, <laughs> things creasing. Um, but you wouldn't think that anything knit would need it would crease, but it does. Um, let me stand up again. Um, I wanted to show you because actually I, I will um, disclaimer. I think I might have said it a moment ago. I don't really twirl anything, um, but I am keen to use up my fabric um, that I've got um, in my stash. And um, uh, yeah, the, these two pieces of fabric, uh, so these two pieces of fabric were very small um, and misshapen in terms of, you know, I cut out other projects and things. So I was determined to fit um, these, these jumper, uh, jumper parts out of these two pieces of fabric. So on the back, when I turn around, you'll see that actually um, I've pattern tetris it um, and actually the facing piece uh, is the wrong way around. But it doesn't bother me. Um, hello, hello lover, hello darling, how are you doing? You all right? Just been joined by Larry, you come up. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. That's a cameo appearance from a whippet. Makes it a little bit different, difficult to see my top. Thank you, Lars. That's very sweet of you. Oh, there we go. And now she's grabbing a toy badger that is in the in the bed. So we're bound to hear her. So I've got kids. I've got whippets. It's all going on. But let me turn around. Um, hello, darling. Um, and you'll see what I mean. So again, it's got the. So this is the same T-shirt. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lara. I don't need you barking. Thank you. It's got the same T-shirt underneath it. Um, and you'll see this sits slightly differently because of the sort of creasiness of the fabric, if you like. And then you've got the split in the side. And then 
Um, I won't talk to you with my back to my, back to the camera, but you can see there that this piece goes the other way. I'm not worried about it. Let's call it a design feature. Um, but again, I really like it. Um, I don't know that I'll reach for this one very often because it's, oh, I don't know, I do like it. It's quite sort of, um, I don't know, it's got a sort of college feel about it. Not that I ever went to college, but um, uh, I'm a university of life kind of girl, that sort of thing. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I really like it. Um, and I, as I say, I can definitely see it being made up in lots of other fabrics. And what I think if I made this in a viscose cotton, something that had a lot more stretch, um, then uh, I'm just feeling, feeling a bumpy bit there, I wonder what it was, um, a viscose cotton, then the neckline would sit very close to this um, and you, would, you wouldn't you would see necessarily, I don't think, the t-shirt underneath. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go. Um, but I, I really like it. I think, um, think the cotton I've got, in, or the jersey I've got in mind is also very similar to this. So, um, but I like the duplication of the necklines. And what's really clever about this pattern is that the arm side is the same. Well, it's not, it's, it is clever. It's the arm side is the same. So if you wanted to have um, a short sleeve on this one and a long sleeve on the t-shirt, you could do that. So you get that look where you've got the the longer sleeve coming out underneath the short sleeve. Um, you could do them both long sleeve if you want to. Um, so I think it's a really good combination of tops. Very quick to make. The t-shirt itself, which I will show you in a bit more detail in a second because I'm just going to show you um, the, the final of the makes I've got to share with you so far this month. Um, and it's, a, a, you know, the, t the, the sleeve comes to here, which you'll see in a second. Just wanted to share it with you because I really do think it's um, it's a, a very useful top for um, transition into fall um, and you can wear them independently of, of each other too of course um, which I might show you actually let me show you that let's take um, if I take the t-shirt off um, then I'll be able to show you what the top looks like on its Todd hang on a sec Okay, so here we go. So here's um, the other version with um, without the t-shirt underneath. Isn't that just such a lovely neckline? It really is just super. Um, it's not like anything else I've got. Um, at first glance, it looks quite similar to maybe the Agnes from Tilly and the Buttons, but it's different to that. Um, I really like it. Um, and that's the, you can see there, the sort of the crop, the crop, it's not crop. Um, that's obviously my fly, my fly there. So it comes across, for me, it comes across my tummy, but the back, which I don't think you can see in this light, the back comes across, um, just hits, hits about the back pockets of my jeans. Um, just a really flattering shape, I think. Um, but uh, let's say, let's do for the sake of um, the sake of continuity. Let me pop the other one on, and you'll see what that looks like, because the neckline will look different on that one too. There we go. That's the other one. Um, I've got dark underwear on actually, so I don't know if you can see that. So apologies if you can, but it's, uh, it's it's still decent, I promise. But yeah, so you can see there comes out different again, um, just because of the the type of fabric I've used. Um, but yeah, really really different. Um, yeah, not like anything I've got in my wardrobe. So let me pop the white t-shirt on, and then I can talk to you about the final make as well. So this is the t-shirt on its own. Isn't that just a lovely shape? Um, I really love how this neckline came out. Um, now I confess that I didn't uh, use a serger um, or overlocker to put this neckline in. I just um, used a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. So the inside doesn't sit as sort of traditionally as, as it would if I'd used a, a serger. I don't have a, um, a cover stitch machine or anything like that. But I really like the, um, the length of the sleeves, the length of the t-shirt itself. The fit of the t-shirt is just lovely. Um, their sizing, you can see there, it's a beautiful curve on both the front and the back. Uh, their sizing is A to G, H, H, I can't remember exactly. I made a size E um, for both. I made the same size um, in both the, the top and the top part, uh, part A and part B. Um, and you can see how they complement each other really, really well. Now I'm going to show you the last thing and I've put it as far away as I possibly can. So let me just reach, reach over here. 
<laughs> reach over here and grab it. Um, and this is the second time I've been influenced by a fellow sewist. So I'm going to put it on um, as we speak because this is a kimono pattern. Um, again, I wrote it down. Let me just, let me just pop that on. So this is a kimono pattern, and again, I've forgotten the name of it. So let's see. This is a kimono jacket from Jigo Cut. Um, now this uh, this is um, this is totally the fault of Lisa from and so on. She released a number of weeks back, if not months actually, um, ten new free sewing patterns and this was one of the last patterns uh, of the collection and there were some lovely things on there um, I'll link it below and um, for you to go and check that out if you haven't already just lovely designs and I saw this um, and those of you who've watched um, uh, watched all my videos uh, thank you I love you um, will uh, remember this fabric this is double gauze from so 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 I ah, just love it absolutely love it let me come a bit closer um it's a beautiful blush pink these lovely flowers on it with teal and, and and pink in them and i was looking to make a sort of kimono jacket um i was going to make the and so on uh, and so on. i was going to make the sew over it one i was trying to find the other pocket oh, where's it gone there it is um, I was going to make the, uh, the Sew Over It uh, Sylvia robe, which is um, used to be called the kimono um, jacket, but um, yeah, they obviously renamed that. Um, and this is the, uh, so the, yeah, the kimono jacket from Jigo Cut. Uh, it's a free pattern. Um, it's not, uh, it's an unusual, um, an unusual website actually, and it did take me a few attempts to get attempts to get it downloaded. But that's because um, it had gone into my spam. Um, you have to sort of, I can't quite remember what you have to do. You have to email them or join their group or something, and then they send you the download. Um, but it is free. And as you can see, I'm wearing it. The pattern pieces themselves are a little bit un different. Um, and the uh, instructions very sparse, but it's not a complicated make. Um, I will say I've st I made a lot of adjustments to it because it's a one size kimono. Um, and yes, therefore I, I, I did all sorts of alterations to it in order to, to get it to work, I, um, to fit rather. I mean, the neckband I didn't have to change, but the, the shape of the arms, um, the length, I think the length it kept the same, but I took a lot off, and I still might take some more off. Um, I think ah, it's, that's right. I it had, the original design has patch pockets on the front. I'm not a fan of patch pockets, if I'm honest, um, but I do love a pocket. So I put pockets into it, um, but then they sat funny because double gauze is quite a structured fabric really um, and then as you can see the pockets here they sort of stuck out so um, and sort of bell bell sort of billowed out so I ended up stitching them down um, to, to be flat so they're always facing facing forward if I'm honest I might take them out and actually um, if I pull that in a bit I might take them out um, and stitch it small even smaller at the side so it might mean it doesn't come um because at the moment i can you know cross it over like that but actually i don't necessarily need all of that i might make it even even more narrow i'm not sure i found it quite quite useful videoing it today so i'll put some footage in here somewhere and actually having watched it back on the screen I almost prefer it seeing it on myself than I have experience looking at it. I hope that makes some sense. But yeah, that's um, that's the, the the last of the things I've been up to recently, um, and I'm really pleased with them. They're all such wearable things. Um, and actually, making this T-shirt, I don't actually have I have I have got a white T-shirt. I made a Tabitha T-shirt to wear underneath the. Um, uh, the Sophia dungarees actually, but having a white t-shirt underneath this this kimono It just makes the whole thing incredibly wearable because I've been wearing it with a sort of a teal color um, Camisole, but it's not warm enough really at the moment for a, a camisole. It's warm, but it's not camisole weather So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been up to so far this month um, I 
uh, what have I got coming up next? Um, oh, I've got a few discoveries. Um, so I'm going to share with you what I found in my roof uh, and what I'm going to do with it. Uh, so that's a bit of an intriguing and came out of nowhere as a concept, concept of an idea. So um, that will be coming up sometime soon. And I think I'll also share with you um, some things, some sewing things that just... Oh, hello, Alice. Hello, darling. What are we doing? What are we going to do? Oh, here we go. Hello, darling. Oh, you two just love making an appearance in my videos, don't you? Just at the last minute, come to steal the show as ever. Hello, beautiful girl. Is it all right with you have to finish this film? So I may have to finish the film stroking and whip it. What can you do? Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to share with you some of the things um, that I found and, uh, and also, sorry, some of the things that um, I've recently um, been gifted that have just revolutionised my sewing, um, my, my sewing uh, equipment, I suppose, um, sort of bits and pieces, lots of lovely things um, that, are, that have come my way recently, which I'm very grateful for. And thank you to, to those that have provided them. You know who you are. Um, until next time, um, please do support my channel. Bye, Alice. Do Please do continue to support my channel um, by subscribing. And thank you so much um, to those that have bought me a coffee. It means the world to me. Um, uh, the details of how to do that are in the description box below. Please, just for a price of a cup of tea, um, uh, I, I really do appreciate your support. And all of that is being pumped straight back into the channel. Um, just having you here is a pleasure so please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button um, until next time please stay safe and well I look forward to seeing you again soon take care everyone bye bye